In this lecture, we're gonna be learning about the different filters that you can use. So all softwares might not be equipped with all of these filters and some of them might even have more, but in general, most of them are gonna have these specific filters and these are the ones that you're probably gonna be using the most when you're digitally painting and creating artwork. So let's go ahead and let's come up to our filter. So in Photoshop, we just come up to this filter window and we come down and we're going to start with liquify. So what liquify does is it allows you to basically warp an image. So specifically, if you're doing a face, you can see that it automatically recognizes the face. Um, in other softwares, there might be different things to it. But basically what we can do is we can just kind of grab things and we can resize them. So you can see that it automatically recognizes that as an eye and I can resize that eye. I can do the same thing with the other one. Um, I can stretch them out a little bit more. So I can make her eyes much bigger than they actually are or I can make them even smaller than they originally were. I can also do things like rotate the eyes. So you can see I can rotate that downwards like that. And I can also do things like adjust the nose. So I can bring the nose up a little bit or I can widen it a tiny bit. So this is where you can kind of manipulate um, different aspects of your paintings. And you have all of these other different things here. So you can see that I can kind of add a smile. And since it automatically recognizes that, I can just drag that smile up like that. Um, I can bring the upper lip up. Um, eye distance, I can bring them closer together, further apart. So there's all kinds of really cool things you can do with this. I'm not gonna get into all of it just because it, there's so many different options, but definitely play around with this, especially if you're painting people. Go ahead and hit cancel. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is blurs. So I'm gonna come up to filters, come down to blur, and there's a few different blurs we're gonna go over. The first one we're gonna go over is box blur. And what box blur does is it basically blurs out your image, but it blurs it out into kind of a box formation. So if you've ever seen when a camera has an out of focus background, this is called bokeh, and you'll usually notice, especially in movies, that the if a light goes out of focus, it kind of just becomes a perfectly round circle, but the box blur is gonna do the same thing, but instead of blurring it into circles, it's gonna blur it into more of a rectangular shape. And the higher we go, the more it just becomes so blurry, you can't even tell. But you can see that when we have a little bit smaller, you kind of see sort of more of a geometric type of blur. Go ahead and hit cancel. All right, the next blur we're gonna go over is the Gaussian blur. So we're gonna come down to blur, come down to Gaussian blur. And this is just gonna give you an overall nice smooth blur. This is probably the most useful one I find in Photoshop. It gives you the nicest blur. Um, and it's just nice and even. You can see as I drag that up, it just becomes more and more blurry. This is, works really well for doing things like making backgrounds go out of focus or maybe your for, foreground layer is gonna be out of focus. So that's what I typically use this for. Go ahead and hit cancel. All right, the next blur we're gonna go over is the motion blur so go ahead and click on motion blur and motion blur is also a really cool tool and you can see that what it does is it kind of just smears a motion blur across here and it's trying to simulate the type of motion blur you would see if you're using an actual real life camera so if somebody's running there's going to be some motion blur involved with that and this allows you to kind of simulate that so if you had a character that was running or a spaceship that was flying or something like that and you wanted to add a little bit of motion blur to that then you could do it with this and you can see that you can kind of control that motion blur so I can get rid of it completely, or I can just add a little bit, or I can add a lot. And you'll see that it doesn't just actually smear it. You actually see there's kind of almost double images of the eyes and the lips. So it really does a good job of mimicking that motion blur. All right. Next, we're going to learn about radial blur. So we'll come to filter. And this is also a blur. Come down to radial blur. Click on that. And it doesn't actually create the actual preview for it so we just have to kind of control this and then go ahead and hit okay and see what it looks like but i'll just kind of show you what it does so if i i can control the amount right here and you can kind of see in this little window it will show you how much it's going to blur that across so let's put it somewhere around 40 or something like that um we can do a zoom spin so it's really up to you just kind of play around with it but you'll see if i hit okay it basically just blurs it around in a big circle so that can also be pretty useful sometimes all right, next, let's go over the ripple filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this real quick. Come up to filters, and then we're gonna come down to distort, and then let's go to ripple. 
So ripple is an effect that you might not ever use, but you might use it. It's something where you could possibly create some sort of a water ripple effect, or if you have, if you copy your image down and make it look like it's water. So if you basically flip the image of a city sitting on a water line, you can flip that down and then you can add this ripple effect to it to kind of make it look like water. Um, or if you have a down shot, you, you could probably figure out some things to do with this, but you can just see that as I drag this back and forth, it just adds more and more of a ripple effect. Go ahead and hit okay. So you can see that a little bit bigger. So there's some things that you could probably find to do with this. You're probably not going to be using it very often. All right, next let's go over the shear effect. So we're going to come back down to distort, come down to shear. And what you can do with shear is kind of cool. You can actually really warp and manipulate the lines in your image. So you can see I can just basically warp her into an S shape. I can, I can do all kinds of different things here. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel. So that's kind of a cool tool. Next, let's go over the zigzag tool. So we're going to come back down to distort and then come down to zigzag. You can see I can drag the amount up. And what you might want to use this for is if you wanted to kind of create a water ripple effect, so let's say a character was looking in the water in a reflection or something like that, this might be useful for that because it, it basically mimics that water ripple effect. And you can bring it down or you can bring it up. Let's just keep it about at 10. That's probably good enough, maybe a little bit lower. And we'll just kind of increase those ripples like that. Hit OK. And can you can see she looks kind of funny now, but you can see that it kind of just creates that water ripple effect in a circular motion. We'll go ahead and undo that. All right, now the last one we're gonna do is lens flares. So if we come up to filter and then come down to, um, let's see, where is that, render, and then come down to lens flares. Now, all softwares might not be equipped with that, but there are some out there that do have it, not just Photoshop, but it's a pretty cool effect. You can see that we have a lens flare and it's just mimicking the type of lens flare you'd see in a camera lens. And I can drag that around wherever I want and it basically in real time will adjust it. So I can put it at any point and all these other flares that are connected to it will move closer or further away from it. The size of them will change. So it's a pretty cool effect. And you can see that I can change the brightness. So if I want it to be super bright, maybe I want it to be a sun in my image or something like that. I can also change the lens type. So right here, um, you can see 105 millimeter prime. Um, there's all these different lens types I can use and try different lens flares. All right, so that brings us to the end of this lecture. So just remember that there's a few different filters out there that you can use and some of them are gonna, you're gonna find very useful and some of them you might not ever use or you might use them very little, but just so you know that they're there, go ahead and play with those and try out some different things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.